That's how we own it. That's how we own it. What's up, family? I'm your girl, Tanika D. Mallory. And it's your boy, my son, the general. And we are your host of Street Politicians, the, the place, place where, where the streets, streets and politics meet. meet. What's good, my? What's happening? Another week. Another week. Listen, we had, I, I think I mentioned last week, but we had over 30,000 downloads of new people to street politics. Because I told you, number one, y'all think I'm playing? Number one. You think we're playing number one, number one in, in our the hearts, world, man. But in we're our going hearts. to the top of the charts. And we got a new, look, we, we got, got a new, new poster. Yep, that's from when we did. Okay, um, Janice, you out here in these streets. We, what was this from? This Janice. is from Double um, XL when we interviewed the freshman class. Yep. Yep. You know, we are in these streets. You see me with my little. Oh, Lord. Anyway, yeah, your, your African guard. That's, I love the fact that you show up You know what I'm saying? Like I got to do what I do, man. You know, I represent. You see black kings, young black kings. We outside. Shout out to ABN. We Yo, repping our yeah, friends today. I see you got that Bronx there. logo on. Shout out to BX logo. Bronx logo. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Shout Bronx out to Trey. Bronx logo came home from, from prison and doesn't understand the world we live what? in. He, he think people is well, he hit so the ground ignorant. running. He ain't out there asking for no handouts. Sure is The man selling clothes out of his trunk. He got pressing a CD, up his shirt, pressing up his shirts on on screen. Doing he got CDs. Thing. He got yo. Listen to me. Doing Shout out to Bronx he, and he also is uh uh what's the word? Not brokering, but doing peace sort of deals. Oh yeah, will, man. He's because he bought you together yeah, with he's your brother Hocus yes. and he got y'all back that. on the same yeah, page. Man. Shout out! Shout out to Hocus! Shout out to Bronx Logo! Shout out to everybody! Shout out to my man. KT, KT's birthday is actually today. He was also one of the people that, you know, a lot of times we be having brothers, our, as brothers, we have disagreements. Sisters have them too. You know, we have them, so sometimes we got to sit down at the table. But man, it takes other brothers and sisters that see what's happening to say, hey, the relationships are too valuable and you got to bring people together and make sure they have That's conversations. Right. So, so shout to out to Bronx Logo. Bronx we'll that. Logo. Bronx Logo. Follow him. Yep. I love this sweatshirt, actually. It's like, shout out to Trey sweatshirt. ABN. Let me see. I got Angel by Nature. Asshole by nature. He said whatever one you want to use. Asshole by nature. He says a little bit sometimes everything. he be asshole by nature. But it That's is my what brother it is. though. We That's keep my it bro. Real. I love him. Bro, bro. And and Trey Trey is doing amazing work. Um Trey got a state. Hot Wheels. Uh no. Yo, Trey yeah. got a Hot Wheels. Did y'all see it? He got his own Hot Wheels with the slab. That's you know what's the up. um the the new Chevy with the, the spokes hanging out. I love like, it. Trey got everything. He Trey should have it because he's in Louisiana out there risking his life trying to save people right now in right the now. Um, in the uh, with with Hurricane Ida and there's another hurricane coming Lord that people mercy. are bracing themselves for. And when I talked to Trey the other day, the way he looked, I was like, Oh he my tired. god! It was it just it hurt, tired. Hurt, my tired. Heart. Tired. hurt my heart. And uh, until Freedom is now trying to solicit. Um, we are soliciting truck drivers uh, to pick up supplies in the state they live in and drive it down to Louisiana to meet Trey and the family at Relief Gang so that these uh, supplies can be distributed. So if you have a truck, you need to email us at organizing at untilfreedom.com. You got a truck, you got an extra few days. We'll get the supplies in your com in your area where you can pick them up and bring it down to Louisiana. So today's show is I'm super excited because, you know, got this belly, you know, and I'm, you know, trying about to consider exactly how, time, yeah, man. well, no, that, first of all, I'm not two pounds soaking wet. Okay. I'm not because I can remember a few months ago that I was talking to like you and I think we were all on a call all on, on a zoom, you my, and Angelo and Linda and somebody else. And I was eating and it was like 11 something at night. And you were like, yo, you can't really eat that at night. Like your face is fat. Like you really hurt my feelings when you said what you said. And it, it was made... a joke. No, it wasn't a joke because it's true. It's true, but it's cool though. I think, you know, a little weight, no... you need a little weight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not like, yo, you fat and sloppy. I'm just, yeah, I know, but if I'm you just stuff in your face at 11, 12 o'clock at night I on the call. It. It's, just it's like, my favorite time to eat, Mike. It's, you gotta I've got to have it. You... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you? I yo, and I... I need a whole steak at 12 a.m. Yo, listen to me. Women are so into their vanity. bodies and vanity. But don't want to do the, the things that's necessary. You want let me just Yo. go get this let me go this nip tuck. Let me do this. Well, how about not eating at twelve o'clock? I know, I'm gonna do gym? that too. You know how about some sit ups? 
How about the I'm going to do that too, but two. I might just flatten just it down low. so that and then I can have a start. Why don't you start? I know. With the gym. I'm going to see. How about somebody That's start like with the Jennifer gym? Jennifer Williams, my friend, my dear sister, our friend, um, who is a, she's a, a, a workout expert, okay? She's like, yo, sis. They don't do working gym. out no more. Yeah, like, is that just, that? they just, but you know, I think you can work out and, hey, it's a balance. But you know, today. Well, why don't you work out first? Today, today, I might. Sometimes right. I do work out. Today, when we. Is sometimes? When is you it? don't know everything but I But I'm do. just trying to say, when do you do it? Like when I'm by myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be by, sometimes I don't be with y'all. Okay. I got my own thing I do. I do gotcha. work out. work out. All That's right, thank you. Okay. And sometimes I lay in my bed and I do these things with my legs, uh, the bed circular. Workout. I do that. I do a little bit of squats. Now my knees have, because of the marching, my knees have issues where the squatting, they're telling me I might not be able to do squatting as much. So I got to find another way. I'm going to figure it out. All I'm saying is that Let today there's a man who's joining us that might be able to flatten it down. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I appreciate him. He's he's dope, but you know, I, I hope he tells you how to start get exercise. <laughs> but before we get to our guests, we have some other things, and you know, cuss. I'll be thinking. I was just thinking to myself, Governor Abbott, right in Texas, right? I saw you and a bunch of men, which thank you so much who all posted this thing that said uh, men should not be controlling women's bodies. And I think that is just so, so, so powerful that men are making that statement. But Governor Abbott is either, either he hates women or he's just dumb. It's one of two things. It could be both. It could be both, but you know, no. He's either, either he hates women or he's just dumb. And the reason why I say that is because this statement that he made where he says, I know what we're going to do about the rapist. So this is after in Texas, they put all of these provisions around women being able to get abortions. And in fact, um, and I guess the six weeks, you can't get an abortion after six weeks. But then I saw that the regulations, the people who actually regulated and reported are the citizens. So it's, it's pitting you and me against one another, that if you believe I shouldn't get an abortion or if you know you heard me say that I'm nine weeks and I'm going somewhere to get an abortion or you learn about somebody who might be helping folks to go get you know the proper care, that you can report me and then I can be fined $10,000 and get in trouble. Like, who the hell, what are y'all talking about? It's so, dangerous. It's, it's dangerous, it's ignorant, and it's Somebody's basically- Somebody's gonna get hurt though. And it's right because you need to get hit in your mouth yeah, if you go you talking are, people business. Work, so that's what you right, mean. talking people business. Got you. But anyway, and so it is. It's very dangerous. And what they're doing is an it, it is an it is a deliberate attempt to roll back Roe v. Wade and take away women's rights to have abortions. And this has been something that we knew that so Republicans specifically were going to be working on. And that's why they wanted Kavanaugh to get his seat mm -hmm. on the Supreme Court. Um, and that's what they're doing, right? The Supreme Court is already agreeing, unfortunately, with this decision in Texas. So when the reporters asked uh, Governor Abbott, he's dumb or he's he's crazy or something. I say both, when they asked this both. man, what are you going to do about rapists? He responded, we're going to arrest the rapists. Basically, you're going to put a bounty on the rapist's head. So you're saying that after they rape, you'll arrest them. So forget about the fact, like at that point that I've been raped, baby. I got a baby in my stomach that I don't want, don't need, too young, whatever, all the circumstances. That's just attached to a trauma that I'm not even able to deal with. And so then I'm just supposed to get, have this baby while you arrest this rapist possibly. And then by the way, the laws, just so you know, in a lot of ways do not really protect women the way that they should or protect, as you said, people who have been raped in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to understand, does he hate women or is he stupid? I gave you mine. You think he's a little bit of both? A, a little bit of both. I just think women. like to good. force someone to have a baby, you know, based on circumstances that are less than fortunate, that are illegal, that 
that are traumatizing. Or you just can't do it. Just can't. All of those things. I mean, but when we talk, when you said the rape thing, yeah. that, that's just to me, it's just like. Stupid. Bruh. Like, you said. <laughs> bruh. Come on. It's not even funny. I don't it's even know not, why I'm laughing. It's really just sad because the mind state, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. The mind state of a white supremacist is dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, like somebody, I forgot, I think it was D.L. Hughley who said, the worst place for a black person to live is in the mind of a white supremacist. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when you start really looking at these situations, like, it's so it's so deep. This situation is just so deep. It goes beyond that. It's a whole nother show we can have. But just, just the dynamics of him just saying, we're just going to arrest them and just not looking at what, what the question actually was saying. Right. And the it, question was like, what are you going to do about the people who raped these women? We still got that baby. You talking about, bro. You, he's talking about something that's not connected. At all. It's not You're connected. You're just so disconnected yes, from arrest the Arrest rapist. But we're saying that the woman who now has the baby in her stomach. Yeah. Who, or, or, the, or the, the fetus. The embryo. I think he might be the more embryo, stupid. The embryo. The embryo. The yeah. embryo. Right? Or the fetus. You now are carrying this thing, this life. It is life, and you are saying I cannot. Do I think this. it's cool. I think it's I potential cannot, life. Well, because it's potential life. Well, the the point is that up until six weeks, what they're saying is that it's not a life up until six weeks. Then they're saying after six weeks, it becomes a life. Okay. What I'm saying is. I it's not in the earth on in, in the world yet, and I cannot I think for handle me, it. I think for me, right? Where where there is, forget it. Let me just so forget. and then and then you know, I mean, I think about my own abortion story, and it's like, and there's so many women who are telling their stories. If I had a baby at the time that I was pregnant, and by the way, I was more than six weeks pregnant, and I had to have a two day procedure where the first day they go in and they do something that basically makes you start contracting. And then the next day they go in and take the baby. I had to go through that because I was too young to have a baby. I, first of all, I didn't even know I was pregnant because I didn't even know my body for too long. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about being pregnant. Then when I figured out that I was pregnant, I was too scared to tell someone that I was, that I was pregnant. I didn't want to tell my mother that. So, all of the decision making, trying to get my friends to help me find a place to go and everything that I went through, it took me some time. And then by the way, I wasn't putting that on my parents' insurance policy because I didn't want them to know. I didn't know that at that time that they wouldn't know, but I thought they might have. So I had to get the money together to go have an abortion. It was a lot of stuff that had to happen. I had I needed time to get it together. And so, you know, there are people with stories, similar stories. And I just, I don't, and even if we do decide as women that we shouldn't be having abortions at a certain time, it should be our decision to make. And we should be having those conversations in conjunction with other women leaders and then deciding what is the best, what's the best for us, for our bodies. And of course, keeping in mind that there is a father, there is a man who's involved that should be able to have some say so, but nonetheless, I as a woman have to be the one to bring life. And I just, I'm, I'm just... The thing that scares me is that then the idiot in, oh, excuse me, I don't know if I'm supposed to call people idiots, but I said it. But the other one that either hates women or is dumb and hates black people and hates poor people and hates everybody is Governor DeSantis in Florida. He's now he's talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to look at the same type of thing here. And it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be in Alabama. It's going to be everywhere if we don't stop it. So it's a very, very, very serious and concerning thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and it's scary as hell. And what's more scary is what women will do as an alternative, because they ain't going to have no baby if they can't have a baby. That's a fact. We know that. Cause we remember. Yeah. And you go watch the movie. What is it? Precious. It's in there. Yeah. You know what? I appreciate the fact that you let me uh, on our, on this show have so many people that help me think through my own life's choices. <laughs> Listen, uh, you know, you make a lot of decisions. I don't. Know. I don't. We make them together. I mean, listen. Don't try to act like, you know, we don't have the... But see, the guest that we have today here with us um, is going to talk about some stuff that in involves men as well, not just us women in our plastic it's about surgery time. choices. It's about time. So yes, I'm, I am uh, so grateful to have Dr. Michael Jones with us today. Now, for you all 
who may not know, first of all, you've seen him on TV. Of course you have. We yes, actually have. put up a post looking for some uh, folks out there who may have had botched plastic surgery jobs. And people were like, well, I don't, I didn't have that, but I know you need to have Michael Jones. You need to have Dr. Jones because they've been watching you on TV. He is a, a, a celebrity um, and you know, he probably doesn't want him to be called a celebrity but he's a celebrity. The uh, world renowned. The world renowned plastic surgeon to many of the stars across the country. There have been people who talk about the great work and service that they've had um, with Dr. Michael Jones. Yeah. And he also specializes in ethnic care and, and specifically keloids, which we're really, really gonna delve into today. Um, my A couple of my family members suffer with keloids and it's always been a conversation since we were small People could not get piercings. Um, my sister actually never was able to pierce her ears. And uh, there was always a concern that any nick you get, it could turn into a keloid because it's obviously a big stigma in our community. So we're really happy to have you here to talk about this stuff today, Dr. Jones. Yes. Well, I am really happy to be here. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes, welcome to Street Politicians. Welcome. And to hearing all you guys talk me up, that just, wow, I just feel great. <laughs> yeah, no, but you, I mean, you are who you are. We don't have to make it up. You have nine offices around the country, so you're servicing people everywhere. Listen, we want to be where the people are, mm. and not all of our patients can come to us here in New York City, mm -hmm. so we reached out. We went to other cities where there's a high density of people of color. So we're also in, in New Jersey. We're also in the D.C. area. We're also in Atlanta, also in Florida, Miami, Houston, and L.A. Mm. Now, but people act like they're not getting plastic surgery. Like they're like, you know, no, these are my breasts, you know. Well, you know, more and more people are being more open about it. It's, mm. It used to be taboo in our community. Mm. People were like, oh, no, that's that's something that's not for us as people of color. It's more for those rich white people. But the reality is people have been black people have been having plastic surgery for years. It's just now starting to become more commonplace where we actually talk about it mm. and we're OK sharing our experience. That makes sense. OK, so. To piggyback off of what Tamika just said, um, as you being one of the people who talk about, we have some males up here for a change, because it always is about what women are dealing with most of the time. You know, two questions I want to ask. First is, what made you get into plastic surgery? And then I want to also ask, like, how many men actually get plastic surgery? All right, great questions. I went into plastic surgery because I love making people happy. Mm -hmm. And I started off doing oncology type of surgery. It's cancer surgery. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult for me because I like to get to know my patients. I like to get to know their families. And then I would spend 18, 20, 24 hours trying to remove their cancer and reconstruct their, their defects after we took the cancer out. And despite that, many times those patients would die. Mm -hmm. And so then that was really hard for me to handle. So. I wanted to change, I wanted to, to pivot and take care of patients that I could grow old with. Mm. People that I could make a difference in their lives. People that I could actually help restore their self-confidence, their self-esteem, make them feel better about themselves, whether it's because of a cosmetic issue or a reconstructive issue. And so that's kind of why I went into what I do. Mm. So yeah, the men part. Yeah. Now as far as men, brothers are having plastic surgery. Believe it, they are. We, we have surgery. The most common procedures for us are liposuction because mm -hmm. we, we struggle to get rid of those love handles and that little bit of fat down the lower abdomen. Mm -hmm. Blepharoplasty, the eyelids, the, the bags under the eyes, the bags over the eyelids, that's very common for men. Mm -hmm. And then rhinoplasty um, is really one of the most common things for men. What's as well. that? What's Nose surgery, nose reshaping, oh. where we're actually, you know, helping to define the nose or refine it or get rid of a defect or a hump or a bump or wide nostrils or a flat bridge. Those are the... So men, okay, but mm. the, 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 the narrative that's out there is that it's mainly gay men who are having, you know, surgery to make themselves look more, I guess, feminine, I guess, you know. But I don't know that that's true because I think... That is not the case. It's not the case. That is not yeah. the case. We do have our share. Right. that are doing some or like liposuction or Brazilian butt lifts mm. for certain reasons. Yeah. But that is not the majority that we see. The majority are very, you know, confident, testosterone producing men. Mm. They really are, are, are inclined to want to just look better. Mm. 
Where wow. they at though? Cause the, ain't none, these men ain't admitting. The first person I heard it's only two people that I, I know that um, Kanye said that he got some surgery done, and I know that Funkmaster Flex actually talked about it. But it's not a lot of men who really say that they're going on. I think it get, it definitely is a stigma. Like men don't really want to talk about it, but it's not something that is prevalent that I actually know about. So to hear you say this is like, wow. So all the men in the gym who are looking like, you know, the, but, they're all sexy. you telling me some of them some of have them. actually sucked it out just like a few of us because I need to suck mine out to tell you the truth. Listen, some wow. of us, some of us will, you know, you might be in the gym, you're working out, but you still may need a little help. You may not be able to see clearly. I, I'm going to tell you this story. I'm not going to tell your name, but we had a Mr. Olympian Mm. And an Olympian. Mm. Mr. You know, the guys who do the muscle building yeah. contest. Yeah. This guy won many of them. But every time he prepared for a contest, he gave himself a little steroids. Mm. So when he gave himself the steroids, he would get a little pooch. Uh, he would get a little bit of what called gynecomastia, where he get the little man boobs. Mm. And he didn't like that. And it affected his competition. So we helped him by doing a little micro liposuction, little mini liposuction in those areas to get rid of those problem parts of his body. But this was a big dude. So slim people like me, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. little. Most people look at me and they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. But there is a pouch that is sitting out in my stomach. And it, it's so funny. We went to Fat Joe's uh, birthday party recently. And I had on this really nice dress. And it was nice and fitted. And I was speaking. And I knew going out the door that I had the conversation in the mirror like, oh, this is really serious. I knew it, it was growing. I've been seeing it. It's it's not just pandemic weight. It's just weight, period. And I, but when I finished talk, you know, speaking at his event, the pictures went viral, and many of them came back to me with people who were my friends. Like, what's going on with your stomach? Are you pregnant? Because mm -hmm. my stomach is is it's out. So people like me, do they get liposuction or are they too small? People like you get liposuction. Realistically, liposuction is for the young. It really shouldn't be done in people that are older. Wow. Because as we get older, our skin elasticity, that spring to our skin, decreases. Mm. So when you take the fat out from behind the skin, if you are older, it's not going to snap back. Wow. It's actually going to want to hang. Flat, so yeah. when you're younger and you have nice spring to your skin, that's actually the ideal time to take that fat out because it will lay flat and you will look great. Mm. Well, wow. I got to ask one more thing. Sorry. Yeah, we this know. Is like, this, is, this is totally She done take over the episode <laughs> still. It's still, <laughs> still a woman's law. That no. So let's talk about breast implants. Because obviously, it's you a big know, thing. That's, breast it's implants a, is a big every, thing. It's a big thing. Everybody, all my friends talk about it. And many of them have done it. Some fake like they haven't. And we know. Mm -hmm. Others, they are very honest in saying that they have. And they're like, they're out. The girls are hanging. So I'm just, so do you do a lot of breast implants? We do a lot of breasts. To be honest with you, in our black community, there are not a lot of women that actually do the augmentations. augmentations. There are a lot of women that do the reductions mm. and do the lifts because mm. they've had pregnancy, the right. breasts have gotten engorged with milk, and then the milk dissipates, and now the breasts hang, and they're sagging. So we do a lot of breast lifts, mm. a lot of breast reductions, and more and more now we're starting to see a lot of lifts with augmentation, with mm. the implants, and mm. so we do a lot of those. Mm. And it how often so what are the risks it, yeah that's what i was yeah. about to go, go, go is it is it health is it how healthy is it what is the risk like you know because a lot of I, I hear a lot of women say i want to get this and this and i'm like well and a lot of them for some reason for me i think it's become like a trend like it's become a trend and a lot of women who are saying they want to get it i'll be like well i don't really see the need you know so what what do you think the risk of versus the reward? Like, do, are most people happy afterwards? Are there, you getting complaints? People like, I shouldn't have done it. Like, what is? Well, you know, that's a great question. And the reality is, why is someone presenting in the first place for it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you're now a 40-year-old woman who back in her 20s had very perky breasts, walked around and you were confident, and then you had four children, and now your breasts aren't quite where they were. Maybe now you're divorced. Maybe now you're a little depressed because you're going back onto the dating scene. So we're here to help that person feel self-confidence again, mm -hmm. to be powerful again. And so there are risks. It is not like going to mm -hmm. the nail salon. It's not <laughs> like going to the hairdresser. There are real concerns. But the rewards can be quite rewarding, that self-confidence, that empowerment that we're 
helping them with. Mm. But the risks are there, bleeding, mm. infection. Mm. Um, the fact that sometimes if, if you're working with an implant and it gets infected, the body doesn't really then want it anymore. It tries to push it out. That's mm. called extrusion, where it tries to pop the implant back out. And the most common thing that happens with, with breast implants is that sometimes the capsule or the scar that forms around the implant, because the body sees this as foreign, it knows it's not supposed to be there, so it tries to wall it off from the rest of your body, mm. forms a capsule around it, and in most people it's fine. The breast has nice natural mobility and the capsule is nice and thin, but in very rare instances that capsule can start to thicken, almost like forming a keloid on the inside of the body mm. around the implant. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it starts squeezing on the implant, the breast doesn't move as well, and in the worst case scenarios it can cause pain and deformity to the breast, and then we have to go in, remove the go implant, in. remove the capsule. Do you remove it, it and put another one in, or it depends on what the client wants, it depends or on is it fat? Okay, so this is my last question on this because I know I'm oh, all deep, yeah, I'm di yeah. digging into it. But seriously, so is is fat grafting? Do you think that's a better option for people who might feel like I'm worried about that encapsulation issue? I think it's an option for the right person mm. because some people are A cups and they want to be D or oh, double and D, and you can't get there. And you from. can't get there with <laughs> okay, fat. Okay. Fat is soft, so you might get one cup size change with, with fat grafting and or you have to do it multiple times mm. because you're putting it in, you expand the skin some, wait several months or a year, then do it again and you might get a bigger size. The nice thing about fat grafting is that it is it is your body's own tissue. So you don't have that same those same issues with the body rejecting it, the same issues with extrusion, the same issues with capsular contracture. But on the other side, there's some people that believe that by putting in the fat, it's less predictable result because not all the fat's gonna survive. Some mm. of it's gonna dissipate, some of it's gonna resolve, and it may not give you the ultimate results that you were looking for. <laughs> are most people satisfied or do you have more people who aren't satisfied? Like, what is the ratio? Because yeah. when I you would... look at Kay Michelle, she's like, oh, it's the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Kay Michelle did too much. Well, That's I hear she you, she but there's a lot it. of people who you know that it's I look. Small there's a lot of people that I look at that have done it, and I feel like they've done too much. And I don't know if they're happy or not. So I just want to know what do you what are you hearing from the patients? Mm -hmm. We would not be in business if, if, if right. our patients were unhappy. <laughs> right. Okay. So the vast majority of our patients are happy. That okay. is the purpose of why we exist, and to make people <laughs> happy. We want they're to make happy, people happy. They're happy, my son. They're happy. Okay. But, yeah. but he brings up a very good point. Too much can be too much. Too much and yeah. so very often in my day, I am telling people that no, we, I'm not comfortable giving you additional surgery or giving you what you want for the next procedure because I do feel that as a doctor, we have to do no harm. Mm. And so there's a point where more surgery leads to harm. When you look at Michael Jackson, at some point he did too much and then he lost the skin on his nose. Yeah. So BBLs is sometimes doing a little bit too much. Like not saying just the BBL surgery, but I've seen people do too much back there. Well, you know, there's there's this different concept that people have of beauty and <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to say it really nice and politically nice correct. Way. But you know, I'm not a fan of that very ant look appearance. Yeah. I like a very natural butt. A yeah. nice heart shape or bubble butt or you know, whatever you want to call it, but a nice natural booty. Yeah. Natural. But a lot of these women are having multiple procedures. Mm. They're doing it two, three times to really get that expansion and the very odd expansion around the hips. So they literally look like ants where the midsection the is very so big small. and then and the legs are really small. Up and so I don't think that, that that's is that a, a bad plastic yeah, the, surgeon? The whole thigh, or is the that... whole thigh and butt ratio is, is it, it has to work out for me. It has to work. Right? Yeah, and that, just, that doesn't look good. It doesn't. So you don't think that's just a bad plastic surgeon? No, that's the patient desiring asking that, for, asking for that. Damn. And that's the concept of their, in their head of their beauty. So let's talk about scarring. Um, because that would be, you know, and I, and I assume that you work on people who have keloids, which is a real, like we're learning that keloids is a real serious thing. But what exactly is it? That's what I'm Yeah, oh, like, okay, good. Because I was going to ask, do people who get plastic surgery not know that they keloid? Is there a way for you to know prior yeah, to like, surgery and then deal with it? You know, that that's a great question. Keloids are really these 
tumorous growths of mm. scar tissue. So anytime mm. you cut yourself, you have an incision, or you just bump yourself on the table, if you're a keloid former, that little laceration, that little cut, can evolve into a scar tissue that grows outside the boundaries of that initial incision or scar. And so it then starts growing into other parts of your body and starts to take over and trap hair follicles and lead to all kinds of wow. other issues. Would you know if you were a keloid former before you went to have plastic surgery? You might not know. You may have gone your whole life, no. never had a keloid before, and then you had cosmetic surgery or, or even a heart surgery or a necessary whatever, hernias, whatever yeah. the surgery is, and then you're, you develop a keloid. Wow. And the keloids are incredibly painful. They continue to grow often. They itch. They can be incredibly debilitating. They can keep you up at night. They are a problem that t up to 20% of people of color, people of color, Asians, Latins, people of African descent will have. Mm. So there's a lot of people in the world that are suffering from keloids. So, so we're showing folks pictures of keloids right now, and you have worked on some big, big cases. Yeah, some of those keloids that I've seen, I was like, wow. I didn't even the know difference. it gets that bad. We work, on, we work on some that are the size of a pea, Mm. And we work on some that take over the entire face, take uh -huh. over the entire back. And it's horrible for these patients. We, we had a gentleman who came to us from Chicago area, um, Keenan, who was featured on our show, who he got his whole church involved because he just didn't have insurance that would cover his procedure. So he got his church involved to give him a donation to travel all the way to New York to have his surgery. And it it, we couldn't do it in one surgery. It took years, Whoa. years for us to remove all of the keloids on his face. Mm. He couldn't go out. He wore a, a towel around his neck all the time because they were draining chronically. While they drain? Pus, foul-smelling discharge were coming out. And constantly. so you're telling me that the insurance companies don't see this as being like a, an issue that should be on the list of things they cover. You know, it takes a lot of fighting. fighting. We spend a lot of our time caring for our patients and trying to convince the insurance companies that this is a necessary procedure. Now wow. you imagine walking around with a beard of keloids just hanging off of your face. And you think that that is cosmetic, to have remove that is cosmetic. It's not cosmetic. It is a medical condition that needs to be paid for by these insurance companies. But the insurance company insurance companies know that the vast majority of people that get this are brown people. I was our just people. about to say They're our people. And just so they don't want to pay for that. Mm. Why, why, what is, what is it, is some, some genetic thing? That mm. It is genetic, and, yeah. that's, and that, is, that is the point. We don't know exactly. why mm -hmm. it was formed. I, my opinion is that evolution somehow wanted to try to create stronger scars, because if you cut yourself, and before we had antibiotics, if you cut yourself, you wanted that that cut to heal and never open again. But oftentimes, you know, you've seen a boxer who, you know, every time he gets in the ring, that one cut constantly is opening up. Wow. So in, the, in, in evolution, maybe we form that stronger scar so that those cuts wouldn't open up, you wouldn't get that infection, and you wouldn't die. So how did you, so, so did you have a patient that you were doing plastic surgery on who got keloids and then you were like, oh shoot, this is an issue? Or do you just have people that showed up like, can you help me with this? When we first opened our doors, we had people that just walked in and said, hey, I've got a keloid. You know, the most common t place for a brother having a keloid is in back the back of, the of his neck mm. because, you know, we shave our heads close. Mm. The barber get a little too close. They go a little too close and this, the, the, the hair follicles shrink below, below the skin as those hair follicles are growing back or the hair is growing back it curls because we have curly hair it creates an ingrown hair and that ingrown hair creates inflammation that then leads to this big keloid wow and so um yeah these those that's the most common site for for men and imagine trying to sleep on that mm. imagine trying to sleep on that every single night you are sleeping on a rock wow that can also I mean, I would. Yeah. So that's like an advocacy issue yeah, that's for a lot. people, especially like I said, I didn't know that um, other people of color experience keloiding, but I've seen for black women, and again in my family, it's an issue, yeah. and it's almost like, you know, 
it's it's like a it's like a it's like a something where I, I feel like my sister at some point in her life she probably dealt with a little bit of insecurity you know sure. just because she has key lloyds or could not do certain things always had to have the clip on earrings mm-hmm. um but you know of course now she's like hey it's right here she's like you know she's cool but she always said to me do you are you sure you cut like let's check it like it's a it's a worry a concern for everyone that you would get these keloids but i had no idea that people were getting them to that extent yeah yeah wow well you're doing god's work god's work you know that's my slogan we're very honored to be able to care for our patients because the common theme amongst all of them is that they don't know where to turn Mm. they have these we had a patient yesterday who came from buffalo said she went to 20 practices in Buffalo, 20, even went to the Cleveland Clinic, and no one wanted to treat her keloid. She had a keloid in the pubic area. Yeah. So she was incredibly self-conscious. This yeah. thing was quite large in her groin area. So wow. she was very self-conscious, didn't want to be intimate any longer, and she was just depressed incredibly depressed even contemplated suicide Mm. and so she had nowhere else to turn no other practice but we at lexington plastic surgeon are specializing in this disorder because we know that there's it's an underserved community that is adversely affected by it wow children too children as well Mm. how many how many surgeries have you actually performed around I would say as far as in my entire practice, I've been practicing now for about 21 years. Wow. I've probably done over 10,000, maybe 15,000, actually 15,000 cases. Mm. But we've done as a practice over 10,000 keloids. Keloids, just keloids. We just don't keloids. even know how we many, know everything all the other know. things you've yeah. done. But you know what? You're, you're so incredible. And of course, um, the, our director and strategist for street politicians is your beautiful wife, Miss yeah. Kathleen, who happens to be always over there. Always over there watching. And, yeah, yeah, and she looks damn good. Y'all, I, I asked you all today, y'all are working out. Like, you guys are not even doing all the body stuff. Y'all yeah, are like actually out. like Listen. putting it in. Talking about you going to yoga. I'm like, yeah. huh? I do a little Brotox though. You do, Brotox. yeah. yeah. My I call mom it has Brotox because it's Brotox. Pretty, you know, yeah, you had to, yeah. yeah. My mom had a she had a stroke and her arm. She they're trying to get it back mm. and they use Botox shots and the doctor he's so fine. This nice doctor he's like you know shoot my mom up no, and my no, mom's no. like he's single. So my mom's <laughs> like you need to go with me to to get my Botox shot so you can see the doctor because he likes you. So uh, he, we we're like having maybe a marriage over Botox. Okay. <laughs> But thank you so Y'all much, Doctor. Y'all will figure out how to get married any way you can. <laughs> Botox, hey, Kat, Motox. Listen, Cat married a, a doctor who does plastic yeah, surgery, okay. so listen. maybe I could marry the doctor that does uh, listen, Botox. Listen, God bless. Me. But, yeah, that's right. You Don't know, be, you know, get you some free surgery. Me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Doctor. We appreciate Jones. you, man. Well, thank you, and, and we appreciate you. We love you guys. Thank you for speaking up loud. Keep yeah. doing what you do. You heard what he said. Yeah. Everybody don't need all the surgery. Some, some is too much. Sometimes, sometimes too much it's too much. much. <laughs> you know, he said it politically correct. Some of y'all is going too far. If you got two butts in one leg, it ain't working. <laughs> oh my lord. You know He's a hater. I'm just being get honest. Your, get, your, get your surgery, girl. Right get now. your surgery. Don't be out here I'll looking like ant woman. I'll be talking to you about my stomach soon. But I love you so much, Dr. Jones, for coming on and being with us today. You are super duper duper incredible because there are people in our community um, who and just in people in general who need that they need a little upliftment to help them feel a little bit more confident and you're doing that work so I'm with you thank you <laughs> thank appreciate you, you. Uh, so I know we said goodbye twice on this show we like black pastors we say you know the sermon is over three <laughs> times before we actually let the guests go but we didn't talk about people who are uh, go out of the country and they get surgery and then you know you hear about cement and all mm. kinds of things horror stories horror stories. why don't you tell you know our listeners and viewers today why that cheaper surgery out of the country might be much more dangerous you know you're not you have no idea what you're walking into mm. you may have had a friend that has gone there and did okay but what happens when you go and things don't go okay what happens when you have an infection Mm. Do you travel thousands of miles back Mm. in a situation where you really shouldn't even be on an airplane? Mm. You you don't. And so it's, yes, you can get a lot of surgery done for very cheap, but you may be getting operated on by someone 
who is not a doctor. Mm. You don't know what's going to happen in your recovery period. Are you going to have a complication that needs to be addressed? Who in, been, in the United States is now going to want to take care of you? We've had lots of patients who try to come to us, and sometimes we're able to do things, and sometimes we say, you know, it's, this is not something that we really want to, in, to delve into because we don't want to be further complicating an issue. Mm. So it's, it's a scary time. We have, we've had patients that have gone away and come back and said that they've had now sexually transmitted diseases, mm. yet they're not sexually active. Mm. So what's happening when they're asleep? Wow. Who knows? Yeah, That's it's just crazy. so dangerous. It is incredibly dangerous. It's not something that we advocate at all. And even in the United States, we have a lot of these now chop shops that mm. are opening up, these high volume, low priced places to have surgery that are often causing a lot of complications and causing a bad reputation for a lot of what we do in cosmetic and plastic surgery. Yeah, because it's going to cost you a few dollars to get Dr. Jones. A couple to, of dollars. <laughs> Listen, you want to spend a you, couple of dollars. But you get but what you pay for, That's right? right? So That's I mean, right. we're here in on Park Avenue, yeah. and we have we have nurse Black men on Park Avenue. Yeah, black men on Park <laughs> Avenue. We have, we have the highest quality of care that we can give to you. I want my facility to be able to take care of my parents. Mm. And so we have the best nursing care. We have the best post-operative care. We have the best surgical facilities. That all costs. You know, I wish my, my employees would work for nothing. But they don't. They don't. Now, they don't. we want you to stay with your PPP. price exactly as it is. And trust me, Kathleen and all her projects that she works on, she needs you to keep your price exactly <laughs> as it is. Because uh -oh. we're one of those projects that we're here begging every week. Kat, please, please, please. <laughs> Thank you again. We appreciate, we appreciate you. you, man. Thank you. All right. So we have a friend. Yes, we friends do. to the show. We've got a lot of great friends that do a lot of great yes, things. Yes, and yes. And every uh, week, it seems like we have someone that we really truly respect. And in this situation, I, I hate to start off with, or let me not say hate. I don't want to always start with introducing a woman or man by talking about their spouse. But you know that our big brother, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. D who's Dr. been on this show and who is someone that um, we've had debate conversations mm -hmm. with Dr. Dyson, but what people do not always know, most people know, but some people don't know that the powerhouse that helps Dr. Dyson to be who he is, uh, is his wife, Marcia Dyson. Yes. Who's with yes. Us today. I know, That's you know, knows. for I sure. Know. You know. know, the two of them serve on so many different councils and panels and in strategy rooms. Um, where people, you know, while Dr. Dyson is there and everybody knows him and they're like, yeah, whatever you said, but they turn around and they're like, well, what do you think, Marcia? Because she's brilliant. Um, she is both internationally and here nationally respected um, and a renowned activist, leader, um, and a big sister to so many of us that are younger activists who are just sort of coming up. And I'll tell you the thing about the Dysons is they are the realest people ever. Like they're not the types that are so- Down to earth, they, all the way down They to earth. They bougie down to earth though. That's right. Cause they bougie. They, they down, down to earth bougie. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let me just give you a proper um, uh, introduction because you do so much uh, Marcia Dyson is the founder of the Women's Global Institute, a member of United Justice Coalition and government and public, excuse me, and government and public committee member for the Coalition of Hope. Mm -hmm. You do so much international work. Um, and on this episode today, we focused on, and we've been focusing a lot on black health. And obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, plastic surgery is one of those things. So we talked with Dr. Michael Jones about that. And he talked about keloids and all, all of those issues. But there's an international crisis happening at the same time. And we have to make sure that we keep our audience and our supporters and listeners aware of things that we see on TV. Because we see it, we hear it, but we don't understand at all what's happening in Afghanistan and how it impacts us and how it just impacts people in general in this country and abroad. So Dr. So Miss Dyson, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's talk Marcia about what's happening in Afghanistan. 
First of all, I want to thank you, my sweetheart, for having me on your show and much success to you and your co-host and your whole team. And as far as that bougie down, like I'm Chicago, but I always say I can be good with this and I can be hood with this. It depends <laughs> on how you roll up on me is how I will <laughs> respond to you. I just want to get that straight. All right now. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. You said that, right? But you mm. know, what I love about you, Tamika, we do work on social justice work here in America, but my whole world is my block. And when we look at Afghanistan and the situation there, it really has an impact on all of American citizenry. I'm teaching a course at Fisk University on global leadership and culture diplomacy because I'm trying to tell these Du Bois scholars that no matter what your education, dreams and aspirations might be, what your whatever your entrepreneur uh, pursuits might be in the future, we have to look at our foreign affairs mm. like we do our domestic affairs and our relationship affairs with our so-called lovers because it is an affair. So in an affair is how you get into it, but it's also how you get out of it. Cause mm. we know that if you leave a woman or a man and they're kind of pissed off at you, they're gonna be some scorn somewhere. We have been in Afghanistan more than the 20 years that most people believe that is told to us. I remember all the way back in the 70s having friends who were actually serving in Afghanistan as black young men in that particular region. And we got into that region because of American imperialism. Yes, I have said the I word under the auspices that we had to safeguard that area, but we have to look at our global positioning and the relationships that we have with our country on a real tip. If not, I'll be lying to you. But fast forward, going to these 20 years, it was also our engagement was deepened because we were trying to retard the investment of uh, the advancement or to stop or block the advancement of communism or Russia's influence mm. in that region, right? This big, great bear called Russia was the auspices into which we maintain our position there in Afghanistan. So now fast forward 20 years later, and this administration's willingness to, and most Americans, and especially the military, wanted to tire of that particular region, the money that we poured into it, that we could have put into our schools, into our justice social programs, mm. right, into our healthcare situations, that the waste. But again, like I started, it's how you end an affair, mm. right? Give him somebody a certain amount of days in that particular region, and I've worked all throughout the Middle East, been on the conflict, uh, the border of Lebanon and Syria during conflict, meeting with the Freedom Army, interacting with Libya, with Gaddafi's son on creating democratic socialist societies. I know that time for them is not our same, same timetable. So it's how we left it. And so when I tell my students why this is important that you look at your world and no foreign affairs, because not only is, are the money spent Mm. impact your future because you're going to pay for that particular thing and your future taxes right but how your future going to be in your livelihood because right now we left that country with an enemy who left us with a kiss that said death to america mm. you know mm. so we have the crip and blood things coming on and we put ourselves at a disadvantage we extracted or subtracted our troops out of a region and that now we're back in that region on the peripheral at a disadvantage. So if we're looking at it's wow. football season, we put ourselves at a disadvantage. So now we're there, right? I remember a conversation I had in 2008 with Senator McCain on Afghanistan. And what he was telling me at that particular time because of my global interest and because of my work at the United Nations and in other foreign uh, groups around the world, right? Especially the Coalition of Hope, which by the way, is a, a consortium of active and retired military men around the world and women, as well as global nonprofit organizations and global social activists, is that the reason why we have to know what is going on in the world because of the, how our policies impact us in our future. One, Afghanistan will be the telling and I think the legacy that this administration is going to leave behind with our 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 our, our NATO pact, right? We're in mm -hmm. now with NATO, but we left them stranded because they're also situated to be more vulnerable than we are. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at that. And disproportionately, when we looked at the first young people, the first armed forces members that were killed, they were children mostly of color and mm -hmm. under the age of 24. Mm -hmm. Our children disproportionately enlist in military services 
to be educated and have entrepreneurial or career opportunities. So we have a vested interest in, as we serve this country. But like, again, what we have to say is why we're there, because so-called Russian communism influence, but second, how we get out. Now, what I wanna say about Coalition of Hope and the real reason, and I'm getting very passionate about this, that I really thank you for having me on the show, is that we are, been vetted by the Department of Defense and the State Department to actually go and to evacuate and rescue individuals that we have left behind. Mm. I'm really proud to say, Tamika, that we have rescued over 800 individuals and have made safe over 1,500 individuals. Are these right? American citizens? These or are Americans and they are allies. And when you look at the women, the first we call them HVTs in military terms. That's highly valued targets. Anybody mm -hmm. in the last 20 years who have befriended American citizenry, who have allied themselves to the agenda of America in Afghanistan as Afghanis, right? As Afghans are highly valued targets. So it's the women who were educated. The women pilots, some of them, I'm told, have been killed, right? It's the women in music. It's the educators. Just this past week alone, the women who uh, had the protest were beaten. And the men who, who photographed that protest were beaten and almost killed. And that's what we left behind. We thought didn't think about them. So it's not just our NATO allies. It's the people who had given their lives to make sure that our spot in Afghanistan was safe. So we could say that we left a 300,000 armed um, Afghan military, but we left billions of military now that's going to be used against us, mm, right? So because we didn't think about that. And even though you train someone, it's like saying for any high school group, okay, I done trained you, so you go on off and you get your PhD. No, you have to really look at what is lacking, and that's not enough time when you understand the region, when you understand the people, when you understand tribalism, when you understand mm. the history 50 years long. It's just not about Afghan. So also, we've made ourselves vulnerable to the big giant countries who hate us, Russia, Mm -hmm. And China, they were the first two countries who basically sold into or, or recognized the Taliban as the regulated or the governance over Afghanistan. We should be shaking in our boots, wow. right? That's a lot. When we think about those three countries. So what I want to inform people mm -hmm. just in general, when we think about the women, the children, the vulnerability, the uh, Taliban said a few weeks ago, Women, go to your houses. We'll deal with you later. I know what that means, right? It's more than just covering up in a burqa, right? It is the lack of education, the freedom of speech, being able to travel without a male and sometimes even without. So all I want to say to you is the world is at our door. I'm asking for it. Haiti, I know there's work there. I'm doing work there. I know New Orleans and New Jersey, American citizens are under siege right now. But this is an American crisis that I want to expose to American citizens from a very grassroots level that we need to be engaged wherever we can around the world. American citizenry, regardless of our ethnicity and race, sexual orientation, or whatever the case may be, have always been the greatest humanitarians around the heart. So I'm appealing. Yes. To your listeners, well, we appealing. We're appealing. We definitely so, appealing too. Because for me, listening to you, I like I, I thought about it. You know, I've heard about Afghanistan and taking. Now you just brought up so many different dynamics that that we should really be scared at this point. <laughs> like this ain't just you know we left. Like yeah. basically, what you said is that we left. You know them under rule of people who actually don't like us who are going to utilize that territory, utilize all of those things against us. And we left them, and we left the people there with a bad taste in their mouth against us, so they can utilize that against us as well. And then we left some of our own people there that are going to be a threat to us, that is going to be threats to them. So there's so many different dynamics when I listen to this. So basically, we, we should have just never left, or we should have took more time. Yeah, like, how do you, what do you think? think? It should have been a, pro a plan. Right. Point. Well, let me go back to that conversation, which I forget about with Senator McCain. He told me even then when I questioned him about it, because my concern was all of the black and minority and poor white children going over to these dangerous areas, fighting wars that we didn't start right, not really knowing the hidden agendas for these particular interests or undermining in those particular areas. He said, yes, we 
we stayed there too long. We the, the love affair has been too long, but anybody who would take us out of that country is lying to us or they're they're not they're not wise, okay? Because he was saying, because when you make a mess, you have to make sure that we have some housekeepers there. And I'm paraphrasing him to clean up the mess because it was so deeply entrenched that we should never leave. He said it may not be overt, but covertly, we should always be there. And the signals to the Taliban was that, oh, overtly, we're out of here. And as soon as they got that whistle right, they started their formation. It wasn't a Beyonce formation, but it was a formation mm -hmm. that is now working against us and working against the allies that we had within the country, those in the particular region around, around uh, Afghanistan and our European partners, which we're now seeing are separating themselves and saying that America has not protected us. America has left even the European countries more vulnerable and they're on their own. So now are we on our own if we don't have them? And that's the reason why impact American citizenry, our foreign affairs and foreign policies supersede our domestic policies because they could be the ones who take us out more than most American citizens understand and recognize and why I'm teaching that to my students that they fully understand that we are global citizens. We are governed not only by American regulations, but all these foreign pacts, some known and some not known, that will come back and bite us in our butt if they have not properly been reasoned with and yeah, them and properly. Right. So and, and you, I, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, we just um, are coming out of uh, the remembrance of September 11th. Uh, mm -hmm. That was just a few days ago. And it makes me think of exactly what you said, that we're now creating more vulnerabilities. In fact, I think I was listening to, um, I wasn't watching the TV, but I believe it was uh, one of the directors in, in the C, within the CIA as they were preparing for 9-11, mm -hmm. talking about the concerns around not just terrorism across the borders, but domestic terrorism that is um, instigated by external factors. Mm -hmm. And so listening Absolutely. to what you're saying, it sounds like these things can be connected. Um, and so it is definitely a concern. And, and if nothing else, we should be educated. We should know. We should be educated. Exactly. We should, be, we should know. So what can people do? Well, first, I would like for everybody to go to the COH Air Care Afghanistan on GoFundMe and to make a contribution if you can. But also, I'm gonna advise you as I advise my students and my friends. You know, I know we like TikTok and we like, you know, the, 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 the verses and all of that, but we really need to start reading our foreign affairs policy. We really need to start looking at not just the personality of our elected officials, but those committees that they sit on, start reading some of the information that is that impacts our everyday life based on our form, our, our foreign policies that are impacting us domestically, because it also talks about how the money is flowing and going. And remember that no matter what city you live in, state or, or whatever, no matter your sorority or fraternity, we are in this together. We are on, on this globe like a baseball floating mm. into earth. And if it gets hit and make a home run, you know, we, we're going to fly off of this thing together. We are on this Titanic together. So we need to know what is on this ship. Who is the captain? Who are the captains, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just one person. It's not just our president. It's a whole group of leadership that impact our everyday life. So knowledge, like in everything, Tamika, what you do on the street, you're not just doing it groping in the dark. You are informed when you are activating your mm -hmm. social activism, no matter where it may be. I've seen you do it, but I also know that you have made a game plan. You are informed. You have a wise counsel. And that's what we need to do. Knowledge above everything. So can I, I just want to ask one more question. And I know you got to yes, go. Sir. But I'm just, because there's so much information. Some people are saying that this deal was signed by Trump before he left office to, to end, to leave. People are saying it's by to, like, it to, withdraw, you, to, to withdraw the troops. So mm -hmm. how, what was the process? Like, how did this come about that we just left the troops? What was the process? I think, first of all, you know, we have this tendency to popularize and romanticize everything. Remember with the conversation I told you I had with Senator McCain in mm -hmm. 2008. It's yeah. not personality driven. 
it's campaign written, mm -hmm. right? Everybody make their campaign promises and everybody want to scratch it off or uh, erase it like on the chalk board as if that ends it all. And sometimes you can't, some things are impermanent marker mm. and you just can't do it that easily so i won't say that it was just trump i did hear him saying how he was going to extrapolate the people immediately and again that would have been wrong what we need is not these cliches not these sound bites this is when we need to inform information and to do things right and this is another thing i'm going to say the reason why i love what you guys are doing with your podcast because i know that you're the truth we need our journalists to be able to have the information. And mm -hmm. I told my students, if Colin Powell was given the wrong information about the weapons of mass destruction, what in the hell you think you're getting? Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. This misinformation and half truths will only get us half ass results. Right. So and in danger. To, and in danger, which means that we're all burdened. I told him we, we're in this urgency of now that we're all burdened to really try to get delved into the truth. And we don't, can't, no offense to anybody, and I coined the term T E L E ban, the Taliban versus the Taliban, right? The I don't Taliban, need the TV mm. ban. Mm. The TV ban. If you're getting stuff and you're reading off a teleprompter, no offense to anybody, I want to say this that you'll get information that you haven't been able to research yourself and get it from more than one agency, then you're spewing and choose yourself. Like Michael always, since you invoked him at the beginning, he likes to uh, phrase the uh, theologian Howard Thurman says, you can take your cup to the Atlantic Ocean, fill it with the Atlantic Ocean, but it's not all the Atlantic Ocean. This time and age, more than any time of my ex eight decades living, because I celebrate my 70th birthday on Ooh, October the 29th. Man, you don't look wow. over 30. Don't be, listen, man. I love you. Me, I, I, <laughs> she said she loves you, my son. That's right, oh. man. Black don't okay. crack. Go ahead, queen. <laughs> But this weariness of the soul is cracking, but that's okay. I got the future, my hope, and Amen. young women like Tamika and that's you right. to you, make queen. sure that my golden years are not lying continuously with the tears that I shed over the misinformation or the lack of information that young people are given because mostly technology. The one thing I told my students at this also, if you're doing your research on the infinite finiteness of Google, you have not done your wow, work. Wow, the infinite Ooh, finiteness. finiteness. Go ahead. Well, on that. <laughs> listen, we can't. I listen. listen. I, I'm writing that down. The, Wait, the give me a infinite, infinite finiteness, finiteness of Google. Listen, that's listen. why you can tell Dr. and, and Ms. Mars. Like, they are a perfect Do couple. Doctor I could just sit there and listen to y'all talk all day. I'm all telling day. you. I Y'all, you, you have such a way with words, but you yes. have the words because you have the knowledge. Um, and you have the yes. knowledge because you've I done like the this. work. And so I, I just want to thank you publicly, as I always say, for being a friend, a big sister to so many of us um, without judging us and just being there and standing firm. And, you know, you are such a real one. And so what you're educating us on in Afghanistan, you know, I, I've been saying this quote almost every week on our show that at one point Dick Gregory said that, you know, we as activists and leaders, you put on a pair of glasses and now you see the things that are not just what other people want you to see, but you know what is. And then you have a responsibility to do something with it. Absolutely. And true. that's a big burden. But now that you've given us the burden, we certainly want to carry the message. And I thank you so much for educating us on this crisis that's happening. And they're talking about it. And some people are paying attention, but our communities don't pay attention enough. And so we want to make sure that we get this info out there. Thank you so much, Marcia Thank you, Dyson. Queen, me. I want you guys to come to Fisk University too. We'd love okay? to. Can't We'd love wait. to. Love you much. Love you. Thank you. Thank God you, bless. Man. Bye. God bless you. So, man, Marcia Dyson, first of all, she's super smart. <laughs> like some yes, of the stuff man. she was talking about, I'm gonna have to call her back and be like, uh, break that down. She's she is phenomenal. And she's a beautiful woman. She Seventy sure is no way 75. she's 75. No way. No way on God's earth that's 75. Black is different. Man. It's different. That melanin, though, is something about that melanin, It's different. Man. And she, but she takes care of herself she as does, well. She does, you can tell. And her man. husband takes care of her, too. It's dope, man. Just listening to her. Like, I I get mesmerized just watching her. And then I'd be like, oh, that's... Okay, I see. Yeah. I see and, where the and, Right, because is. they're both so brilliant. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about it, um, and I know this is totally off the topic, but when I say, like, he takes care of her as well, and and I and he does definitely. That's his wife. You see them all the time together, but she's so engaged in her own stuff. She's got her own life. Like she's not sitting around. In fact, she helps him and then goes about her business. She's not sitting around waiting on him at all 
to help her feel like she's achieving, right? She's an overachiever. She's teaching, speaking, organizing, sitting on boards, doing things, and just being so active all the time. And that for me is such, is so, is such mentorship about women, um, women in relationships and just women in relationship with yourself that you really do have to keep yourself going and not ever allow um, you know, pe other people and spaces to make you. Cause I've seen her leave spaces and go create some other dope stuff. Like people want Marcia yeah. Dyson. It's not the other way around. Nice no, dope. It's dope, man. Just listen to her, man. Once again, shout out to her and, and the information that she gave us about Afghanistan. Yeah. Like, she broke it down. So now I'm really paying attention. Like before I was like, oh, we left Afghanistan, it's messed up. And you hear, but when you listen to her break down the consequences, you know, abroad and right now inside of America right now, all those things is really serious. Which brings me to my, I don't get it. You know, our brother Irv Roland, you know, who's definitely one of our we brothers. We need to have Irv on. We gotta have Irv on, man. Irv Has just he got ever a, been on? He just got a new job. Yeah. He's working with um, Utah Jazz. You know, so shout out to Irv. But this is what, a, what is he? He's now. What does Irv? I know that he's a trainer. He's a trainer. He's, oh, he's a physical the, trainer. He's one of the for trainers the for the for basketball the, um, for Utah Jazz okay. right now. So shout out to him for that. But this is something that he's really been passionate about. One of his brothers, you know, Julius Jones. Not his fam. His not blood family, brother. but somebody that he grew up with. He's, he played ball with. Right. Who was also a basketball player. You know that he he sees as a brother. Julius Jones is being is on death row right now. Mm. You know, and, and based off all things, the information that somebody has came forward to admit to the crime that he's been convicted of, there's a lack of DNA, he was only 19, he has an alibi, all of these things, and he's been sitting on death row for 20 years, not giving a new hearing, not giving anything. And I just really don't get how things like that happen. How do you make a decision to take someone's life to end? You know, especially in this day and age when DNA is clearing people, when all we're finding out every day that people are being convicted of crimes that they shouldn't be. You know, some people, that people are being overly sentenced. Shout out to Dante Mitchell, who just came home a couple of days ago. You know, yeah, he's being, that so yeah, what you're saying is that people are being um, over sentenced. Over sentenced. Right, right, you know? right. So right. when you look at these situations, and now this man is scheduled to be executed mm. in less than a month. Next oh, month. I, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I thought for some reason it was in. Yes. Three months. Next month, this okay. man is scheduled to That's be right, executed. That's right, October. Mm -hmm. I really just don't get how of good conscience, good faith, in, in the name of justice, that you execute someone who did a crime, or supposedly did a Committed crime in 19. Crime, right. That you, there, there is so many different elements that says there's a possibility, that there's the slightest possibility that he didn't commit this crime. And you're scheduled to take this man's life. You know, you you haven't said, you know what, we want to, we're gonna give you life imprisonment, give you an opportunity if, if evidence, if we give these, you know, hearings and things, because there there is a possibility that this man is actually innocent. Mm. You know, and they're about to take this man's life. Mm. Like I really just don't get that. For the life of me, you know, death penalty is one of those things that's very, very strange to me. You know, especially when there's not clear and undoubted evidence that somebody did something that is even worth being put to death for. If you can't complete, if there's any shadow of a doubt that the person committed these crimes and you're taking their life, it's just inhumane for me, you know? So I, I really just don't get it. And I don't even know how to say it, man. My, we, we're gonna continue to advocate for him, you know, write letters for him, go to my page, you know, she'll probably see the post where we Yeah, we just posted about Julius Jones. Julius Jones. But for some reason, I thought it was three months. I didn't realize it no, was a month. It's literally next month. Literally. October. Oh, because the first... The, yeah, I know why. Because the first... The this the other post that we put up was two months ago. Mm -hmm. And it was coming in three months. And then today, we're talking about um, it now being a month. Wow. And you know, uh, the thing about... And, and I'm sure I know Julius Jones has family. Um, obviously, we support his family, but I feel like for Erd, he's been fighting so hard. I mean, they did um, the the long walk, which was I forget how many miles. I think it was like over a hundred miles yeah. in protest of this execution. Um, they've been trying to bring awareness through every every every, every. Uh, you know uh, person and 
every avenue possible to uh, bring attention to this situation and stop the execution. And um, I think that I feel worried that if it happens, that Irv will never be the same, you yeah. know, that mentally he'll never be the same because he's really fighting for a man really, and man. speaking to Julius and listening to, you know, somebody that's on death row. I, I, that What is the movie that um, happens in the town that my mother is from? Oh boy, uh, uh, Jamie Fox plays the the man on on death row. Um, mercy, mercy. So that movie takes place in a in in a town called Monroeville, Alabama, which you know. Uh, that's the the town that my mother was raised in. Um, a town that I actually was raised in every summer. And so Mercy uh, and there are other stories. To Kill a Mockingbird, all of that is from this particular town. And um, this man. Uh, Jimmy, who's on death row, we watch his story and the story of others who are in those cells next to him that are about to be executed. Most of them for things that, as you said, maybe they should receive life in prison, but for someone to believe that they are the executioner, that they are God to take their lives, I don't know. And, you know, I've had to ask myself, especially with Tariq's dad being murdered, you know, would I have supported the death penalty? And my honest answer is no, I don't support the death penalty at all. Um, no matter how heinous the crime may be, I just don't support the death penalty. And that's tough because if somebody raped my daughter or something like that, I don't know. Like at that point, I might have to revisit how I feel. But understanding what I know about this system. What was somebody raped your son? Well, I'm just saying I don't have, first of all, my son is 22 at this point, so I hope he but doesn't I just, get raped. I, so, oh, well, I'm, I'm just, just trying saying, to say. I'm just saying it, if I had a child right now, hopefully I would have a daughter. It was a, it's a person. Okay, that's your But person. I get your point. Yeah, because so I'm going to feel the same way if you do something to my son. Yeah, that's right. Daughter, son, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now. So, I, you know, I, I just think about if that happened, where, how would my, my opinion change? And yet I still have to say I don't support the death penalty. So, you know, our prayers to Julius Jones and his yeah. family um, and these days before a possible execution. And it's just like I, I'm, Sean King is also advocating for a man who is on death row. It just seems like this is such a, 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 thing. a thing that's it's really happening. Thing, it's and terrible. It's, it's something I really like every day we, we see where you know the system has failed and made mistakes mm. and when you know that a system is as flawed as our system is when you sentence someone to death you know knowing that there's a possibility that there could they could be wrong mm. you know it's just inhumane to me so. well we we've got to have um we've been doing black health and we should continue to, to get back to that but i think next week we should be talking to Dante, um, yep. Dante Mitchell. Maybe we bring Irv, um, do we bring Irv on about Julius? We should probably oh, bring we have Irv Julius on. Family. We yeah. should, yeah, we, we should, should, should do have that. But we should advocate. also have like uh, Joe Take Edi, our sister, who was at the NAACP for years. That's what she did, abolishing the death penalty. Um, she did a lot of work there. So I think those are good shows for us yeah. to focus on. So yeah. hey, team, we've got a bunch of shows already That's planned. Right. So um, that brings us to the end of this show. We covered a lot. We went from one end of the spectrum to the oh, next. To the end, man. It's never, never a dull moment. Shout out to Marcia Dyson. And um, Dr. Shout Michael out to Jones. Dr. Michael Jones. You know, don't get too much butt. It's just, it's, we don't like it. We just, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> don't you get six too much butts, butt. If you got six butts in one leg, we don't like it. It's not appealing. We don't think it's cute. We're not sexy. It looks stupid. It's not really a good thing. So if you're doing it for you, cool. But no man is attracted to a woman who has six. That's a that's a bold faced lie. It is. Oh, absolutely. Where? Because what most we, of those women are a meme, sick. Where they there's at? a meme that's going around right now, and I'm not saying that all women that's got big BBL booties are whores. Okay, okay? so let me just give that little uh, disclaimer. Disclaimer. But the meme says, I spent my whole life trying to be a good girl to find out that men actually like hoes. Yeah, but... And so... But we don't, I, re like, quote-unquote, the word, the H word that you use. W, excuse the me. The W. I'm saying, yeah. No. Uh, but hoes. See, so you talking about the professional. <laughs> In the hood, it's H-O-E. We ain't talking... You using the professional word. We, the hoes you talking about, quote-unquote, that you said, because I don't... I'll get stabbed. You calling women. The hoes you talking about ain't the ones with six butts. In That's not true. That's I'm not true. So I don't where? believe all of them are. But I just want you to understand the Ooh. ones that I see on the internet and you see the women shaking their heads. 
that if are getting you, passed from one man to the next. Who? They got BB, BB, BBL. Okay? I'm tell you this, man. Don't get it twisted. And they're getting passed from one because nobody yeah, Well, wants that's to okay. But guess what? It. But guess what? They may be, they may <laughs> yeah, be getting passed, but they be getting passed like and popping. Like. And the ones that got little BBBs, our little BBBs, you know, we still trying to find them. Yeah, here. because so you, how you, about don't want, that? you don't want... I don't want get me a BBL. So are you, you know trying what? to find the dude that's you know passing what? him? Because you can pass. I want to get me a BBL and see if that helps me with God my quest you. to find me a husband. Go on the quest. I'm going to get me a BBL, but I am going to get Just my stomach Well, I'm going to tell you this, man. That. I promise you. If you got three that. asses in one leg, <laughs> the quest is going to be yeah, this. Yeah, some of it is too much. When it's sitting up high on your back, sis, it don't look good. Sis. I'm just being honest. Sis. And once again, to end this show... We love you. We're still the number one show in the world. Number one. Right? Number one. In the heart. No. It's in our minds and it's in your hearts. We are number one, man. You Keep giving go. us episodes. You have to actually subscribe. Subscribe. So that we can be Hit number the like one button. Subscribe, on the charts. Subscribe. And shout out to uh, the Black Effect Network. One year one anniversary. One year anniversary for the Clap Black Effect, the Network. Black Effect Network. Network. Street Politicians has been a real thing. We started yes. before Black Effect, but... Then they put us on and gave us real distribution. So shout so out to our brother Charlemagne, shout out and Charlemagne and our sister Dolly and yep. the whole team Taylor and then Janice and Catscape and everybody that comes together to make crew. street politicians real. Oh, yo. What? I'm not going to always be right. <laughs> and Tamika's not going to always be wrong. But I guarantee you we will both always, and I mean always, be authentic. Peace. That's how we own it. That's how we own it. Listen to Street Politicians on the Black Effect Network on iHeartRadio. And catch us every single Wednesday for the video version of Street Politicians on iWomen.tv. That's how we own it.